Well, here is a story that will make your stomach turn. A French study that was just released finds rats are, that are fed genetically engineered corn suffered from tumors and severe organ damage. This is in the wake of a battle going down in California over big agro businesses like Monsanto and proponents of food labeling. Proposition 37 would require all food that contain genetically modified organisms or GMOs as they're known to be labeled. Such a move could have a major impact on what food people buy and eat. To discuss, I'm joined now by Alexis Badenmeyer, political director of the Organic Consumers Association. Alexis is also part of the California Right to Know campaign that is fighting to label GMO foods. Alexis, welcome. Thank you. Uh, so we see what's happening to rats being fed GMOs. Uh, is this what can happen to humans? Absolutely. We're seeing a huge uptick in cancer among our population, diet-related diseases, gastrointestinal disorders, allergies amongst kids, um, autism. All of these things could be related to genetically modified foods. The studies need to be done. Um, but is there any study connecting uh, the ailments that you just listed specifically to GMOs? Well, the study that came out yesterday is a very important one. This is the first study that's looking at the effects on rats of eating genetically modified foods over their lifetimes. Human beings in the United States are also part of this study. The way the study was connected, conducted, they gave the rats the genetically modified corn, they gave them the genetically modified corn with the herbicide that the corn is used with, and they also gave the rats water that has levels of the herbicide in it that are the same as levels permissible in the United States. I just States. want to point out, we are looking at the study, exactly what has happened to these rats. You can clearly see these uh, fair, fairly large tumors, especially Enormous in comparison tumors. to the size of, yeah. of the rats. So, I mean, even though it hasn't been, there aren't con conclusive results on humans, we can only presume that we would, there would be a similar result in humans. Yeah, the rats had tumors in their mammary glands. We have a huge rate of breast cancer in this country. Um, you know, why are we having a rate of cancer that's subjecting about half of us to cancer in our lifetimes? It's probably because of our diet, and it very well may likely be related to genetically modified foods. Uh, scary stuff there, um, and this is all going down amid a battle in California over Proposition 37, which would require labeling of GMO food, and those for or against are splurging on funding this measure. I want to pull up this chart here. It shows the funding on both sides, those that want food labeling, and you can see mostly health and organic food companies. They raised $3.8 million. But giant agro corporations like Monsanto, Bayer, Nestle, and Coca-Cola, they outspent um, the, the, uh, those um, against this measure drastically. They raised over $32 million. So, I mean, uh, Alexis, does Proposition 37 stand a chance when you're looking at huge spending on, on lobbying against it? Well, we expect to be outspent about 10 to 1. And we're not going to have the money that they'll have to put up a lot of television ads. We're relying on the consumers who care about this issue to spread our television radio ads via email, via social networks, to tell their friends, to in engage in our phone bank. We're organizing a phone bank all around the country to call California voters. So we need volunteers and we need the small contributions to put out this campaign and give, us, give ourselves a chance. But I think we're going to win. Nine out of ten people support labeling. And so no matter what lies they hear, even if the other side is able to drop that support significantly, I still think that we can beat them. So I hope I, everyone will get involved. You just said nine out of ten people support labeling. I mean, that's a huge majority there. Why is there such a fight against getting labels on the food that we're putting into our bodies? Well, as you mentioned, it's all about money. In a race like this, uh, the voters get to choose. But politicians are a lot more susceptible, I believe, to the influence of large corporations when their campaigns depend on raising money from companies like Monsanto. So Congress hasn't been able to stand up to Monsanto, but I think the voters of California can. Now, let's say this does pass and we do get labeling on our food. What do you think the consequences of that be? Of that will be? Um, how will that affect the types of food we see in our grocery stores and ultimately what the American people eat? 
Well, we already see people choosing organic whenever they can, when it's available and when they can afford it. So I think we'll continue to see organic grow as it already has. But in Europe, a lot of the companies, rather than labeling their food as containing genetically modified ingredients, chose to take those ingredients out. That would be the best case scenario. And I hope that the, the companies work with their consciences and want to serve safe food to the public. Um, so let's say this does pass in California. Do you think that will have a ripple effect on other states? Absolutely. California is the seventh largest economy in the world, and 10% of grocery stores are in California. So I can't really imagine companies labeling things differently for the California market than they do for the rest of the country. And lastly, just want to ask you to put into context uh, how widespread GMOs are. Mm -hmm. um, how can you describe uh, when somebody goes to the grocery store and we're looking at aisle upon aisle, how much of those that food actually contains GMOs. About 80% of all processed foods contain genetically modified ingredients, and that's according to the Grocery Manufacturers Association. And they're one of the, the groups that is opposing our right to know about genetically modified foods. So they admit that it's in there. The, the difficulty is you know, figuring out which ingredients. But what I tell folks is if you avoid the worst ingredients, if you're avoiding trans fats, high fructose corn syrup, um, you're going to be cutting out GMOs from your diet. But, you know, it's just overwhelming the amount of products that contain these ingredients. Um, absolutely. And um, th this study just came out that shows that, or I guess that, that proves or doesn't prove, because of course, when you buy organic, it's more expensive. And, and a study just came out that says that just because it's organic doesn't necessarily mean that it's healthier. What do you think about that claim? Well, an apple that's raised organically and an apple that has pesticides sprayed on it, it's, it's not surprising if the organic apple isn't a lot more nutritious for you. It's still just an apple. But you're avoiding all of these toxins that are probably giving us cancer and creating a whole raft of diseases. So wouldn't you still choose the organic apple? Right. Even if you weren't convinced that it might have more vitamins in I it? I mean, pesticides and chemicals certainly don't seem, they, it doesn't sound healthy. I'd rather keep those, that out of my body if possible. Uh, Alexis, very interesting. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show. That was Alexis Baden-Mayer, political director of the Organic Consumers Association.